through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and I'm joined by two recurring people we've had on before, <laughs> Melanie Linsky and Gillian Jacobs from Teddy Bears. Uh, hello, I must be going last time, yes. and Milo. Uh, I tried to come up with another comparison. I don't know if I'll ever be able to top Dinosaurs meets Teen Wolf. <laughs> but this one I'm, I've thought of sort of as like a uh, combination of the big chill uh -huh. and very bad things. I There's like a death. Them. There's I some prostitutes. It's a dark comedy. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah, I forgot about the prostitutes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good job. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I tried. Totally. I did. <laughs> totally. Uh, you guys have sort of an interesting counterpoint. Like the guys have this very sort of weird relationship where they're combating because he wants to be involved with his girlfriends and unfortunately you're in the position of having to deal with this all what is this sort of like from your perspective acting opposite that because it seems like like when i was watching this movie with my girlfriend she's like nope that's not gonna happen that's completely implausible but like i imagine it's such like a, an interesting position to be in with somebody who's coming off of this deep, profound, personal tragedy? Like, how much leverage do you give them? How do you make mm -hmm. that believable? Because it'd be very mm -hmm. easily, like, for somebody to be like, no, I can't relate to that at all. But you make it believable. I think in sometimes you're in a relationship with somebody and you're so sort of entwined with each other and so involved in their pain that you get to a point where you want to do anything to stop mm. them feeling that way for them and for yourself. So I kind of related to it on that level. Like I had been in situations before where I was like, I don't really understand what you need, <laughs> what you're asking me for right now, but sure. You know, you kind of like just try to make it better somehow and just hope that at a certain point they'll be like, oh, wait, I was crazy. <laughs> I've woken up and everything's fine. Which is very much what your character is yeah, doing. Yeah, I think that's what like, Hannah's doing. Out, come yeah, back. she's like, okay, I don't understand. This is what you need. It's going to end at some point. It has to. I also think that when you're with somebody who's going through something, like Krumholtz's character is, you feel like such an asshole to walk away. So you yeah. almost sometimes feel very stuck in the relationship when someone's going through a trauma. And no matter how crazy and unreasonable they get, you feel like you can't mm. leave the situation. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think one of my favorite scenes, though, is where you're in bed with Jason Ritter and you're like, have you seen his penis? Is it, <laughs> it's, even, it's such a funny moment that, like, it's, it's, it's definitely out there, yeah. but, like, it still feels funny and kind of within the context of what's going on. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and my character, I think, is much more open to things like that, the most open of the women. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so she, it's, I guess, not as a long of a walk for her to get there. Um, he brought you soup, apparently, so, you know, hey, that, was, that was the reason. It's more than some boyfriends have done for me, yeah. so, I mean, I <laughs> Oh, we don't need to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're <laughs> with the microphone. Yeah, she's she's definitely the most receptive to the to the proposition. I love that scene as well. Yeah. It's so funny. This film is definitely um, a much different than you sort of imagine in a lot of ways. For instance, like the last third of the movie mm -hmm. with the dog, like I didn't see that coming at all. Like yeah. how, how is it that you can sort of be thrown these curveballs and try and keep it within the context of what the film is without it seeming too crazy? Because it seems like it very easily could have spun off into a completely different movie at mm -hmm. that point. That's all on Krumholtz's shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have to do that part. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, when you're when you're watching somebody unravel like he is, at a certain point he becomes alienated from us as the other people there and forms this kinship with the dog. Yeah. And great. you know, mm -hmm. I think that we've all sort of shut him out in various ways. And so he's developing this intense relationship with an animal that can't tell him he's nuts. And then, uh, <laughs> and then that's taken away. And then we sort of maliciously take that away from him. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but I guess, I mean, haven't you known people in pain who do strange things? I'm sure I have. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. yeah. That was the thing I loved about it is it felt very true to life. 
in the way that just like weird things are kind of going on. It's, you know, like a, a, the whole week is so bizarre and surreal. Uh, I mean, I was, I was asking um, David and Zachary about looking at it from the page because for me, there are things that like I look at from the outside and I think would be amazing but weren't. For instance, Dracula, the <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola mm-hmm. one. Like you're like Francis Ford Coppola, Bram Stoker, Dracula, Gary Oldman is Dracula. Like it seems <laughs> like it should be like this fantastic film and then you watch it and you're like, what happened here? Maybe it was the Keanu Reeves. I don't know. I'm just saying. But like looking at this one, it seems like you look at it on the page and it might be easy to go wrong, but it seems like, was it talking with the director? Was it knowing who else was involved with it? Could you see something within the character that you really could relate to? What was it that sort of attracted you to this script specifically? I loved it. I just, I don't know. There was something about it. It came to me at a time in my life where I was ready for <laughs> something like that. The kind of, that kind of catharsis. Um, and I, I thought it was funny and I thought it was weird and then I had a meeting with Thomas and I really loved him and he's such a weirdo and I was like, yeah, you're the right person to be <laughs> telling this story and I trusted him. Um, and then, you know, they started getting these great people together and I was really excited. Yeah, I, I also really liked the script and um, I got really excited when I heard that Melanie was doing it because she and I had worked together years ago and she's the best actress I've ever worked with so a chance to work with her again I feel the I same way let, no. <laughs> I leapt at so for me you know I, I love the script as well but, but Melanie was a huge draw for doing the movie well, I mean beyond just the two of you like this this is a film that is a, a very solid ensemble it's it, I mean one of the things I thought was nice in the way that you guys are doing press is sort of pushing that ensemble aspect yeah. to it what was it like to cultivate that sort of connection between you all because it feels like David was talking about there's frequently that one bad apple in the bunch <laughs> that can totally ruin it otherwise yeah well that he's that apple I guess. <laughs> so he, he would know yeah he wouldn't know about the connection <laughs> no it was it was a very intense time for us yeah we lived in these weird little houses in the desert and god we were so I was so lucky that it was Anna and Gillian and I living in one little house and the boys were in another. Nicer house. Nicer house. The boys had a better house than us because they're divas. Um, But we got so lucky with this group of people that we had and especially like for the girls that everyone was so easygoing and nobody required like a lot of bathroom time or anything (laughs) because it was like one tiny little bathroom. We had to get ready ourselves. Um, But we all just got along really well. One of the sort of interesting phenomena of the movie that I noticed is that almost everybody who's in the movie has like an extensive TV history. Even like Ned Beatty, you think Roseanne. I mean, French Stewart, obviously, Third Rock from the Sun. Mm. Was is there something about working in that kind of environment that helps you work in an an ensemble, sort of, or is it just serendipitous that TV actors all have the same free time each (laughs) year? Like, what is it that sort of brought that together I don't know that that was intentional on their parts I do think that a lot of people are doing TV shows these days so there's a higher percentage of actors who are on TV Uh, um, I think that working on TV enables me at least to sort of go with the flow on a sometimes (laughs) the audience won't know that Krumholtz is periodically peeking through a curtain behind the camera. You can just come and sit in here, Yeah, I mean, if you want to be a part... (laughs) I've already stroked his his chest, so I don't know what more I can can bring to this discussion. There's a little cheer if you want to sit. All right. Um, He's a voyeur. He likes to watch. Yeah. (laughs) They actually cut out a scene in the film where he's he's jerking off watching Anna through a window, so... (laughs) Yep. Whoa. Yeah, it was too disturbing. <laughs> it was a little too dark. It's a little too dark of a color. Yeah. I, I, I already People love this. Like, oh, oh. I already love the scene where he's like spooning with the prostitute. It's like that, no, that's know. such a sweet, like disturbing scene at the same time. Oh, please. But it's, it's so funny to think about this. I mean, you guys have come from interesting projects. I mean, I just interviewed about. A butt, a butt monster. monster. Yeah, like, yeah. It, like coming from that, w- w- was this like a, a definite? 
decision to go opposite that? Like, I mean, it feels like... It, I did this before Milo. Um, oh, so you wanted to go opposite that. You're like, I need more butt I need some. Life. I need some puppets and <laughs> poop monsters in my life. Uh, I, think it, I think it feels good to switch things up. Like, this was a very naturalistic film. And for me, doing a sitcom most of the year, it is really nice to do something that is not that world um and so yeah definitely for me it's refreshing to to do a movie like this which feels very grounded and um requires a more you know naturalistic performance than the sort of heightened um sitcom world so i i i would guess i'm i don't know always want to do what i'm not doing currently i i mean your part was sort of one of the most interesting to me too because in essence like crumholtz is pushing the story Mm -hmm. but like i think you actually have one of the most profound arcs in the movie because like a to like be receptive to this whole process like i love the scene where he's telling it and you're sitting there just like no (laughs) like so embarrassed but then like you know by the end like i love that you know the connection that you and him have like there is this like meaningful moment that really as weird as it is you can completely appreciate is that like, is this a role that you really felt like was going to be a role that you could go deep on? Or what was it that about this character that sort of caught your attention? Because you've done some real interesting, like, hello, I must be going, uh, for a very similar reason. I love that character. Mm-hmm. Was that as a woman, you know, coming off of divorce, who could be very easily just be sort of like this, you know, upset, you know, whiny, crying, like, part. But you really, I mean, you didn't, you're the relationship you got into was one that was understandable, not like creepy or comedic or something like that. Oh, thank you. Um, I think for everything, I mean, you know, these movies that I do, you never make any money at all. So if you're going to commit to doing it, you have to love it. Like really, really, really love it. Because, you know, you have to put so much of yourself into it and it's never easy. So there always just has to be something instinctively in me that says yes to it, that just feels like there's a part of me that's going to work through something or there's there's something in me that I need to express or something like that. So it's like a weird sort of instinctive response. And that's, I don't know, I read this and I was like, yeah, there's something in here I don't usually understand what it is until I start doing it. I sound like such an <laughs> asshole. No, no, <laughs> not at all. Really, it doesn't sound super no, actory. No, no, it doesn't at all. But then, you know, you start doing it and it's like, oh, it's that thing that but, I'm trying to, like, yeah. process. And sometimes I feel like it's not until after you, like, watch something cut together sometimes that you understand the story in a totally different way. Yeah, yeah. Or your own, like, shit that you're going through that you're, like, working out. Is it there. like therapy? It's ex- the, every job that I do is like therapy. There's some weird thing in my brain that's like, okay, there's something in there that I need to deal with, and then you do it, and something gets worked out, and it's like, oh, okay, that's what that was about. Is there something nice to working on projects like this that are ensembles? Because, and I was talking with them as well, acting to me from the outside looks like a very sort of lone wolf sort of career because it's really you're the one driving it. You're the one, I mean... You, it's not like everyone's like, oh, the three of us are going to do all of our projects together or something like that. You really have to be entirely responsible for your career. So it seems like when you're on a project with a bunch of people, that sort of feels like a family or something like that, a surrogate family. Is there an element to that with ensemble projects? Is that an attraction to it? Or, you know, is there... Like, do you want to just be the lead every time? And you take it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm going to say that, like, if, you know, Mission Impossible 5 came your way and they're like, look, Tom is out. We want you in it either way. I'm like, I would be the second choice. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Of you. I mean, action, you know, I, I'm, I'm waiting to see some action roles from the team. Like the saddest mm-hmm. action movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, buddy yeah. cop action yep, movie. Right. You would be good in an action no, you, movie. Have you ever seen me run? <laughs> no, no, exactly. I've seen you in spin class. You're very good. You've done action on <laughs> a community. A <stationary> bike. <laughs> we, could, we could do like a spinning action yeah, movie. We we're just okay. like class action film. <laughs> you know what? Here's what I'll say. When I was a little kid and I started doing plays, I would sob hysterically every time a play ended because it was like a family and I didn't have any friends and I didn't want to, you know, it's like you come together, you're so close, you see each other every day. 
then it ends and you never see each other again. But the nice thing about, you know, um, being an adult in this industry is that you get to kind of have continuing relationships with people, kind of the opposite of what you're saying. Like, Interesting. Mm. Melanie and I have now worked together twice. We're friends. She, Anna, and I see each other semi-regularly. Mm. We talk to each other all the time. And, you know, that's the nice thing is you get further on in your career. You hopefully get to a point where you get to start having a say in things and work over and over again with the people that you like. And when you do find people that you feel a connection with, you, you try and seek out opportunities to work with them again but that being said I'd never met Anna before this film and I couldn't adore her more I wish she was mm. here because she's just the best person mm. in the world so it, you know this was like striking lightning lightning in a bottle something a lightning metaphor in terms of <laughs> <laughs> I think we get what right. you're going with yeah yeah it was yeah. like just like a really lovely group of people and, and then you just feel really excited because when it goes wrong it goes really wrong <laughs> It's so nice when that happens, when you just really love everybody. <laughs> For a second, I thought you were saying it was nice when everything goes really wrong. I was like, <laughs> nice I guess that could wrong. be good. That's I mean, favorite. people like yeah. the room, you know, there's something to be Oh, said my about God, that. yeah. I mean, that, yeah. I mean that's... Mm. Everything is going wrong. wrong. <laughs> would, you, would you guys like... I mean, is there something in your careers that you haven't done that you would like to do? I mean, bike buddy cop movie not was saying like i'm thinking premium rush too you know joseph gordon levitt's out the two of you are in um <laughs> two of us equal one joseph gordon levitt <laughs> no no that's that's why it's twice it's like step up to the street bike this time yeah see that'd be <laughs> awesome I love it. I love see it. now you're thinking but uh like I, that's what makes it double the action is that there are two people instead of one now so you know okay. you gotta think hollywood here bigger is better yeah that's one. right um sure i'd do an action movie if somebody would hire me I can't imagine doing an action movie. <laughs> I I don't know. I'd like to do like more sort of period stuff. Oh. <laughs> she like to do movies Silence. about menstruation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's basically That's exactly just what I'm you in. and Kate Blanchett going like head to head, or Kira Knightley for yeah. period dramas. Yeah, That's exactly. Good. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I have to ask inevitably with this movie is. Are there any sort of crazy um, requests that people have given to you or that you've given to other people? Sort of a la what David Crumble. Not, I mean, not, not that you asked to sleep with like a whole group of people. But like, what are some. Like, have you ever had a crazy sort of experience that you, someone asked of you? I mean, as actresses, I imagine when you go around doing press and stuff, people have asked you to do some weird stuff, for instance. Hmm. Or maybe as an actress. You get some like PAs going around, and you're like, uh, "I want my iced tea in a chalice with a pimp stick or something like that." The PA know. is asking us for that. No, you're asking them. I'm oh. saying like somebody <laughs> could ask you, or that makes you could more ask sense them. that a PA would. Ask you know, me or for maybe, it. maybe you're just um, that nice on set that a PA feels comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, people are really into actresses' feet. Really, I get I, re I get requests for pictures of my feet and what color uh, toenail polish I'm wearing on Twitter. You I was impressed what? by I your Air Jordans, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. I don't get any feet requests, and I think it's because people have seen my feet and said, no, thank you. <laughs> and it makes Aww. me feel bad about my feet. I don't think that's the case. Well, get ready you for 100 see. creepy tweets after yeah, this exactly. air. Well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. we'll, try, we'll just forward them all to you. I, mean, I had a creepy request at work once. When I was doing a movie with my then boyfriend and the director was like, we had like a sex scene and the director was like, well, you guys are dating, so you you might as well just like really have sex. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, no. <laughs> he was like, I don't really understand what the big deal is. Like he he thought he was going to get some kind of cinema Was his name type. Vincent Gallo? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That, that's that's some, uh, some aggressive action there. Um, wow, I love yeah, that's Vincent Gallo. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? That's, I mean, points for asking. Yeah, we had I the mean, balls yeah, to yeah. ask. So, I like, guess he was excited. He was I like, mean, "Well, what's the cinema problem? verite or something?" Yeah. You know? I don't wow, know. I feel like a foot fetish is nothing compared to that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's appropriate intense. that you bring up feet because I was asking David this: mm. Is uh, the chest rub the new foot massage, a la mm. Pulp Fiction? I feel like it needs to be contemporized. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when my dog gets anxiety, I rub his chest, so yeah. It's very <laughs> sensual in that situation. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> <Mick>. <laughs> 
That's awesome. Um, all right. Uh, we probably need to start wrapping this up. But what other stuff do you guys have coming out? I mean, obviously Milo yep. is mm-hmm. getting out breaching. there. We're breaching. We're <laughs> breaching. Later this year. Dinosaurs meets Team Wolf, as I said, with a puppet. <laughs> yeah. Um, Malco. Uh, I have another movie in this film festival. Yes, that's right. You're becoming Hatzel. the queen of Sif. Yes. Um, <laughs> Lord over everyone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, Putzel. I like that movie. It's cute. Um, and then some other things that we're waiting to like see if they get into festivals and stuff like that. Very and cool. I did a pilot. And I wanted to get picked up. With the Duplass brothers. Yeah. And I made a oh, really? Yeah, they directed an HBO pilot. Oh, is it Togetherness? Yeah. Oh, man. I'm a huge fan of uh, Steve Zissos, who's... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Perhaps the first person to bite his own dick off on camera. Oh, okay. He didn't bite okay. his own dick off. He had it bit off. He was the voice of Milo, though. Oh, that's right. Oh, was Boom. he? That's awesome. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh, my god. I tweeted him that immediately after the movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. he's such a sweetheart. Yeah. He's so such talented. a funny guy. One of the nicest guys I've ever met. Yeah. Too, so that's awesome. Yeah. I didn't realize that you were in that as well. That's another reason to look forward to that as well. I know. Thank you. Well, my main fun. reason for looking forward to it. And it's not TV, it's HBO. So. That's yeah, correct. Different. Yeah, different. <laughs> um, yeah, I have Milo breaching and. Um, With Ma- is it Magnet release? Who, yeah, who's behind? Magnet okay. and um, Walk of Shame. Did I talk about that? That's I think Elizabeth you Banks. Yeah. That. Oh wow. I, um, Elizabeth Banks and James Marston. Um, I did a web series called Tiny Commando that's going to be on Yahoo in the fall with Ed Helms and Zach Levi. And Community got picked up for a fifth season. Uh, and I hear breaking news. Da, 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 Dan Harmon's coming yeah. back as well. That's pretty exciting. I know Super a lot exciting. of people on the Twitter is going on. I know. There, so that's very cool. Yeah. Um, also, where can people find you? I know you both have Twitters, as I recall. Mm-hmm. Yes, we both have Twitters. Yeah. What is? What are they? I'll put them down here as well. At Melanie Linsky. And tell her about her feet. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, really. I hope I hope We're it blows done. up. They're here. probably awful. Your feet aren't awful. I've seen them. I bet if you Google yourself, you're on WikiFeet. There's and I feel like, like celeb- there people get way more know. flack. Like Julianne Moore, I feel like she's taking oh, all the flack. Oh, well, that, that was a shoe. That was yeah, an that's unfortunate a shoe, it was a shoe situation. Thing, but she's taking all the foot flack right now. So I feel the like. foot flack. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. All will be coming good news towards you. Melly, I'm going to have a bunion in like five years, so don't worry about it. Why? My mom had a bunion. My grandfather had terrible feet. Don't worry. My my reign as foot queen is going to come to an end shortly. <laughs> I'll say, you know those amazing feet? Clea. Have I you bet. ever seen her feet? No, I have not. <laughs> Clea like Duvall. A whole spinoff <laughs> podcast right here talking about it. Talking like, about feet. You probably could make a fortune. There's like three men watching this right now who are uh, like, oh. This is a creepy movie that my mom rented when I was little about um, a, a Opera singer who's I uh, mean castrated by his brother. I've seen that. Uh, for five dollars, you could give your mom a very special exactly. present. This movie really disturbed me as a child. No. Farinelli. I remember he's having sex with a woman and he can't come, and his brother comes in and finishes the job. That's <laughs> stuck with I me my whole life. I love <laughs> yep. your mother so yep. much. Uh, <laughs> and I'm at Killian Jacobs. If you want to know <laughs> more facts about inappropriate movies than my mom did when I was a child. And- Tweets about your feet. Yep. Those are the two things. I don't write about my feet. No. People write. You do funny it. Vine videos with your dog. Yes. Which I just saw as well. Thank you. You're so good at Vine. Oh, thanks. It so. seems to be all that you and David are just like uh, all about the Vine. Yeah, it's called Sitting Around. Is Kermode's on Vine? He just joined. He just got an iPhone. And he just joined. Brave new world. I'm excited. Breaking news. Terrified. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's what we do here I'm on like, the It's all breaking news. Uh, they beatbox. I don't know if you guys could do something quite as. Astounding as that, but nope. the da 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 is pretty good as well. Yeah. <laughs> All back careers. I talked about castration and and yeah, and the man who couldn't come. Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yes, um, yeah. thank you so much, you guys. I look forward to seeing <laughs> what you guys sunglasses. do next. And uh, check out more reviews at MacGuffin MacGuff dot in. And oh, uh, we'll see you good. next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.